If there's one piece of gear that will improve your video, well, it has to be this, the tripod. Hi, my name is Drew Keller, and well, this is sort of the great unloved video accessory. I mean, really, who wants to lug one of these things around? Well, we're here in my garage to not only talk about how to buy and use one of these, but also how to create tripods out of everyday things. Okay, so why do you want to use a tripod? Well, if you're out shooting and you're trying to hold on to your camera by yourself, the concept of, well, that's good enough, really doesn't apply. Handheld video can look okay for a few minutes. Then, as the person recording the video gets tired, well, the video gets shaky. Be it breathing or fatigue, all that moving around gets tiresome for the audience. Even if your camcorder has image stabilization, it can't compare to using a tripod. Tripods come in all shapes and sizes. Consumer tripods are very light. It's partially because the heavy ones, well, they don't sell. The better consumer tripods solve the weight problem by adding a hook at the bottom so you can hang something heavy from the center. It doesn't have to be a sandbag. A bucket full of rocks or water will do nicely. So if you're going to buy a tripod, what should you look for? Number one, make certain it's easy to use. All the releases, locking rings, leg extensions, knobs and doodads should be easily accessible and really simple to use. Decide how small you want your tripod to be when it's folded up. If it's too big for you to bring along, why bother buying it in the first place? Is it tall enough for you to look through the viewfinder of your camera when the legs are extended? One word of warning, when the tripod's extended all the way, it can get really wobbly. Does it have a level? A crooked shot is just as bad as a shaky one. And a level, even a little bubble level, will help immeasurably. Use a pocket tripod. It may barely hold your camera and forget using it for a tilt or pan. But even on your desk, it can give you a great shot in difficult circumstances. Okay, so you've forgotten your tripod, or maybe you don't own one. Now what? Well, resistance is your friend. In this case, I've taken three rubber bands and I've kind of looped them together. And I'm going to use the tension of these rubber bands to help hold my camera steady. I'm going to loop these rubber bands through my belt like that, and I'm going to hook my thumb through the end. By picking up the camera and holding it up, the tension of these rubber bands help me to create a nice, stable camera platform. You can also create a tripod with a piece of string and a quarter inch lag bolt. The first thing you need to think about with the string is you need to make certain that it's long enough to reach the ground when you have it up by your shoulders. Probably about six or seven feet will do. So, make a loop in the end of your string and tie it on to a quarter inch lag bolt. The great thing about a quarter inch lag bolt is it's the same thread as the hole for mounting your tripod onto the bottom of most cameras. So all you have to do is screw in your lag bolt to the bottom of your camera. Step on your string and pull up. Create a little bit of tension. Again, that resistance is going to help you to hold your camera nice and steady. And if you have a tripod, you can put it in your pocket. So you don't have a lag bolt, you don't have rubber bands, you don't have strings, but you do have a table lamp. Well, have I got a solution for you. If you're really stuck, most lampshade screws are the same thread and size as your camera mount. Just remove the lampshade, mount the camera. Hey, it works. A tripod will make your video look more professional. It's going to give you the most quality out of the least investment. 